We are the Umbrella Reminder Group. My name is Jack, this is Xiaotian, and this is Z. Uh, our project is basically, you know, there are times when you know, students carry umbrellas and umbrellas are annoying and we leave them in class because we're in a hurry to get out. So, um, you know, a problem with that is when you leave, you leave your umbrella, you're going to get out and it's pouring and you're going to get drenched. So we decided to develop a device to, you know, counteract that problem. Okay, so Okay, this doesn't really work. It's not an amplifier. Okay, so uh the way this works is that uh you have a transmitter which you attach to the umbrella and you have a receiver which uh you put it on yourself and when you walk when you walk away and uh the receiver is no longer receiving a signal from the transmitter, uh you have a beeper on the receiver which goes off and that should alert you that you forgot something. In this case it's your umbrella. Um what are you what we are using uh as a transmitter is an oscillator um uh, which has a variant voltage and then that <coughs> that is fed into the input of a voltage control oscillator. And we're using a uh, phase lock loop and we're using the uh, output voltage of the oscillator to directly uh, modulate the voltage, the oscillating t signal from the VCO. And then we're uh, sending it out over, over the air as FM. And then on the receiving side, we demodulate the FM signal and then we do a series of uh, band passing and rectifying to get a to get the in indication indication that a signal is present. So therefore, it would not set off the buzzer. But if there was no signal present, the buzzer would be set off, and it will notify you that you have left your umbrella behind. This is the uh, schematic for our oscillator. It's ju it is just a Copas oscillator oscillating at 10 kilohertz. Uh, we're using a uh, PLL, and we direct, we're directly modulating the oscillator signal to the oscillating to the oscillation uh, waveform of the VCO and sending it over the air. So uh, after we finished our first prototype, one of the uh, biggest things that we wanted to do was to reduce the power usage uh, of the circuits. So one idea we had was to basically clock the transmitter, clock the receivers. Uh, we were actually going to clock the oscillator too, but then uh, we realized even at full hertz, the oscillator didn't have enough time to boot up and uh, after every time we uh, shut it off. So the clock circuit is a very simple one. It takes a crystal oscillator uh, at 32.768 kilohertz, uh, runs it through an inverter, throws it into a counter, and then buffers the, uh, and then we take the counter output at four hertz for the transmitter and two hertz for the receiver. Uh, we clocked the transmitter twice as fast. That way, we didn't have to deal with uh, syncing in the transmitter and receiver. And then we're also use, again using the phase lock loop as an FM demodulator. Um, this is just uh, the demodulator configuration, and we get a de the demodulated signal out at the the output. Okay, so this bandpass amplifier, uh, notice it's actually a bandpass filter followed by just a regular non-inverting amplifier. Um, so this, we put five ohms here, but in reality, we found out that uh, the inductor has about like seven ohms of uh, parasitic uh, resistance. So in reality, you don't see that resistance over here. And uh, yeah, this is uh, just an LF411 using a uh, single rail supply. Uh, this is a rectifier and a comparator, so after the amplifier, we'll rectify the signal and we'll compare it with uh, another signal. And this is actually, we use potentiometer here, so we'll compare it against uh, some known signal and we can, we can set uh, whatever the signal is uh, based on the uh, testing conditions. So the clocking on the receiver side is uh, very similar to the clocking on the transmitter side, again, just a crystal oscillator tossed through an inverter, and then a binary, count, uh, binary counter. Uh, a lot, we have a lot of the external circuit also attached to an inverter uh, for the buzzer control. 
Uh, one problem we had was that if we clocked the buzzer control, then the buzzer would turn off at the same frequency of our clock, which is two hertz. So every half a second, it turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Uh, we wanted it so that you know if it goes off, it's you know continues going off to remind you until you hit a switch to stop it. So um, after consulting with Professor Valancourt, um, he suggested using SR flip-flops. So uh, we used an SR flip-flop to control the buzzer with a switch f to reset it. But then I realized that uh, I didn't have any way to count the incoming signal as well. And for some reason, the reset on the counter seemed to mess up every time we clock it. So I decided to just toss another SR flip-flop in there. And that, through a, nor uh, through a NOR gate, that's then inverted, goes through, controls the one-shot section that controls the buzzer. Mm. When we were designing uh, the transmitter and the receiver, we had in mind a very easy-to-use device. So you just pop some batteries in and you forget about it. And we tried really hard to reduce the uh, power consumption by a lot. In the beginning, we, we were using a uh, FM modulator from a microphone, and that drew a lot more current than we like. And on the receiver side, we used to use a radio, which obviously would draw, would draw a lot more power than just uh, two uh, phase-out loops on each side. And then we're, we got uh, the receiver down to 55 milliwatts went on. No, transmitter down to 55, and receiver at 85 milliwatts went on. And since they're clocked, so there's further reduce, so it's not on all the time. It's on maybe uh, half, half a second each time, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is basically, uh, all right, so this is the transmitter, which you can see is pretty small. Uh, most of the space is actually taken by the umbrella itself, which we use as an antenna. and. The receiver, uh, we perfed it on a perf board. It's a little bit bigger, but as you can see, it's still pretty small. And really, the limiting factor is the antenna itself, which we you don't see on here. Um, other specifications, as you can see, it's pretty cheap. Um,